I was asked to explain the Coriolis effect and this is the best way I can come up with so this is what I'm gonna work with okay now see these arrows here represent the rotation of the earth on the six degree axis that is a proven fact calculated and is able to be added into any shooting equation no matter how how long the flight time of the bullet is this is true never varies it's what it is it can be added in period the end okay here we have our target with the direction of the earth's rotation here we have the path line of the bullet yes it's not a perfectly straight line i realize that i just drew it out real quick okay but this is going to be this is going to represent the actual line of the bullet as it's traveling okay then we've got the shooter okay no i know it's not the best drawing on the on the planet but it's for representation's sake and we have the line that the bullet is coming out as it leaves the rifle barrel this is very important to know so you understand the reason why there's two is so that way I can show you the trajectory with the Coriolis effect as it affects your shot as it spins as the earth spins and as your bullet continues along the along its path okay so here we go when we line these up okay we're shooting along with the exact axis of the earth okay if you notice the little red lines stop right on the target because that's where exactly where you're aiming now one other thing that you need to realize is that the earth is according to Google 131 million four hundred seventy seven thousand two hundred and eighty feet in circumference that's feet not miles not yards 12 inches each all right then you divide that by 24 for 24 hours in a day which comes out to five million four hundred seventy eight thousand two two zero okay so every every hour the earth moves five thousand or five million four hundred seventy eight two hundred twenty feet every hour then you divide that by sixty for sixty minutes in an hour comes out to ninety one thousand three hundred and three point six 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 feet per minute you take that number you divide it by sixty for sixty seconds in a minute comes out to one thousand five hundred twenty one point seven two seven 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 eight feet per second okay now if you take that number and divide it by three you get uh, five hundred and seven point two four two five nine two five nine two six yards per second that's five hundred and seven point two five yards per second the earth rotates all right now I'm gonna get into my my best shot that I've ever made thus far which happens to be 3710 yards with my rifle my bullet speed average is 2680 feet per second when it leaves the muzzle so with that you do the math properly comes out to nine and a half seconds of flight 
Okay, so you take that 507.25 yards, multiply that by 9.5 seconds, that comes out to 4,818.80 yards. So pretty much 4,818.75 yards in nine and a half seconds. That's how much the earth has moved during the flight time of my bullet. Okay, now with all that being said, you can always re you can always go back and listen to those numbers again. But with all that being said, okay, when your bullet, before you squeeze the trigger, your bullet is still attached to the earth via the brass that's attached to the rifle chamber. The rifle chamber's chamber is connected to your uh, chassis system. Your chassis system is attached to you via your hand, shoulder, so on and so forth, and then you are attached to the earth. So everything is moving at the same speed. Everything. But the exact moment that the bullet leaves the barrel after you squeeze that trigger, okay, if I'm shooting at this angle, okay, do you see the, the six degree axis of the earth right here? If I'm shooting at that angle, okay, that means my bullet is going to do this. Remember the large dotted lines are the trajectory angle of my bullet, okay? And here's another kicker. As it's rotating, not only is it moving away, or it's going to be moving to the right of me, but it's also going to be getting farther away at the same time. You have to calculate that in. You have to know where you're at in relation to the axis of the Earth. Because if you don't know, every single degree that you're off throws your calculations off immensely. Especially when we're talking about nine and a half seconds of t uh, flight time. Uh, most people don't even factor in the Coriolis effect below 1500. I start bringing it into effect at around 12 because my flight time for a thousand yards is less than two seconds. There's enough momentum or inertia, if you will, on my bullet as it leaves my barrel that it's going to reach the target before the target has a chance to move because the inertia is going to keep it online. That's also, you know, you also calculate in spin drift, which is constant, which can be calculated in, and that's, a, that's another stone cold fact that you can factor in along with the rotation of the earth, the speed the earth is moving, and the angle at which the earth is moving. All of that can be factored in. Those are stone cold numbers, okay? You do your research on the internet, you'll find those numbers, you'll be able to calculate them in, or just plain experience will, will tell you what you need to know. Um, now, once again, when I squeeze the trigger, okay, I'm not using my exact shot, I was at a different angle, okay, but for this particular shot, okay, the red line is going to the center of the target, and my bullet feed from my rifle is dead on because I was at this angle. Okay? Now even at this angle, okay, while I'm going directly with the axis of the earth, okay, that target is still moving away from me with each second. Even though everything's still perfectly in line, I'll, most people will still miss because they're not calculating in the time travel where the target is moving farther away from you. Now, in the direct opposite direction of that, if you're still on target with the direct axis of the Earth, and that's spinning, everything is still lined up perfectly, okay, you're, 
and you don't calculate the target moving closer to you, okay, what's going to happen is that target, you're going to overshoot every single time because you didn't calculate in the rotation of the earth. Okay, now, if you look at this angle, okay, all these are good. Okay, when I squeeze the trigger, there it goes. Straight line of access, okay, everything's good, but then all of a sudden, the earth kicks in, and my bullet hits over here and farther up. Even though I stayed the exact same distance, because of the rotation of the earth, the target is actually moving closer to me, but away from me at the same time. Um, as you get more experience and you get better equipment, you know, whether you use a crystal, whether you use a shooting app, whether you use just good old eyesight and judgment, everything works out to where you learn more, you can, you can adapt it, and you can start to utilize it in your shooting. I know a couple of shooters that actually factor in the Coriolis effect at 500 yards. And some people say that's overkill. Some people say that they, they try to factor it in at 100, you know, whatever. I say you factor it in for what works best for you. For me, it's right around 1300, 12 to 1300 yards. And I do it with all of my rifles that go out that far. Um, now, if you think about this, okay, as long as you got a straight line trajectory and you keep in mind the rotation of the earth on the six degree axis, wherever, whatever angle you're shooting at, okay, that target is always going to be moving, no matter what. Because even at this angle, it's going to be the target is going to be moving to your right, but also closer at the same time. Okay, I hope this is coming through. And if you follow it around, okay, and you keep the straight line trajectory, see like this angle, okay. The target is going to be moving away from you to the right again and moving closer. And whatever angle you do, you have to keep your bullet line in line with the axis of the earth because the bullet, once it leaves the muzzle, is only going to travel in that direction, period, the end. Now, there is going to be some inertia momentum from just the pure force because like I said it's moving 500 over 500 yards a second let that sink in for a second 500 yards per second is what the earth is rotating at so with that that's a lot of speed when that bullet leaves the muzzle there's going to be inertia kicking it to the same direction of the rotation of the earth. Some. Not enough to keep it on track. So you have to compensate for that. And having a good compass, having a good crystal, if you you know, some form of some sort of crystal, some sort of device letting you know wind speeds and all of that, you can take it all in. Or you can do what a lot of shooters do, myself included. I've downloaded a uh, ballistics calculator. And with that, it generally gets me within the ballpark so I can see splash way out there. With, or my spotter, I should say, can see splash way out there. And uh, we can make correction calls on the fly. And uh, for every... For every yard you have to go out farther and farther and farther, there's more calculations that have to be taken into place. Well, I can do the next one, such as spin drift, such as learning to 
get in touch with your body and actually knowing when to squeeze the trigger in between heartbeats because you're so focused on everything you're doing you that's one another thing that you have to factor in is your heartbeat you know a lot of people don't realize that when you're doing those long range extreme shots that even with your heartbeat moving the end of the muzzle because it's attached you got your shoulder your uh, shoulder stock resting on your shoulder there's a lot of major veins and I believe a couple of arteries even so there's a lot of force moving into that barrel whether it's just very minute less than a hundred thousandths as the bullets as if you squeeze at the wrong time that barrel's going to kick off to the left or the right depending on where it's at left right up down you know nine o'clock six o'clock five o'clock four o'clock whatever it, it'll be kicked at a different angle than what you're trying to shoot at and the farther out it goes the more it multiplies there's so much into taking extreme long-range shots that if I were to do one video on all of them I think my battery would die and I got a 64 gig uh, memory card I think I would fill that up and it would there would still be more to talk about so I'm gonna make a series of videos but this one in particular I was asked to describe the Coriolis effect I really hope this helps this is just an overview of it there's a lot more to it that I don't know the quote unquote technical terms for it this is just a general overview to get you started um, but cliff notes on it would be know where you're at on the face of the on the face of the earth where your target is on the face of the earth in conjunction with the center axis of the earth's rotation because if you don't know that there's no way you're going to make the shot properly it's not going to happen um, you have to take into account you know spin drift you got to take into account uh, inertia of the bullet that's flying through the air you have to take into account um, winds and uh, you got to take into account just so much to make a to make a extreme long range shot and the farther out you go the more you got to calculate in but the most with the Coriolis effect the most important thing is knowing where you're at in conjunction with the center line of the the earth so that way you know exactly the angle you're shooting at in conjunction to your target in the center line of the earth. If you don't know that, you're never going to make the shot. This is the Otterman. Have a good day. Thank you very much.